Nothing is real, it's the next episode. back since uploading my project JU concept one the gravity fed I've noticed that there's been a lot of really good comments you know you have to understand that this project is complicated and I don't have all the skill sets but what I do have are a very particular set of skills I'm very good at the mechanical and the the CAD work and I have the tools to make the items but I'm very keen to learn about electronics and programming so I'm going to be straightforward and say I'm not the expert on everything, but I'm certainly creating the platform for everybody joining with their specialist skill sets, and let's see if we can do this together. And the whole purpose of this channel and these episodes is to really try to make it uh, a, um, a, commun uh, a community, would you say community? Uh, a project that is involved with like-minded individuals to myself. And the other thing I've noticed is that there are some budding designers out there, people that are interested in engineering, but want to appreciate what's involved with uh, the whole process of brainstorming, uh, conceptualizing, right down to solving problems and how we go about solving problems, and then having the final product, and then looking at version upgrades and how we can improve those designs. So this is exactly that. This is for those budding engineers that really want to get involved uh, this is your opportunity to, to get involved and you, there's no such thing as a silly idea, a silly concept. It's just throw it in the pot, it can be considered, looked at and, and the, that discussion there will bring out some brilliant ideas as well. So following on from concept one, let's talk about concept two. Uh, and concept two is like totally thinking outside the box. I've got an idea here that is completely on its head. And I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but it just came into my mind. I thought, why not? So join me on this one and see what you guys think. And as always, feel free to comment and let me know what your views are and keep bringing in the suggestions. Following us shortly from concept one, uh, the gravity fed, we're going to do another video with all the comments coming in and how I, how I can make those improvements and those design hurdles that I'm struggling with and what suggestions have come in and how they would be able to help me making uh, that concept one move one step forward to finishing the project. Well, here we go. Here's the concept I've come up with, and I know what you're thinking. What the hell is this all about? <laughs> well, whenever I come up with the designs, I always like to think outside the box, and it's always a good idea to put a wild card in your concepts. A wild card allows you to think outside the box, and it may be that you've not thought about something, and it could open up a discussion that could actually bring ideas for the previous concepts or the concepts that you've come up with. All of the designs that we've come up with so far are linear in fashion. They go down either a, a top to bottom or a left to right or whatever it is. They, they go through a process linearly. Here, what we're going to be doing is looking at a rotary system. So this is a, a, a top view of what we're looking at. And if you can imagine, it's a batteries that stack up like this along the whole thing. They'll be filled with batteries. 
especially in the hopper. These paddles here, they would move in this direction. So these arrows actually wrong. They should be in the opposite direction. So the, these pads would move together, they spin together in this direction slowly. As they spin round, they pick up these batteries. So you can see here, some batteries would engage along this path and be pushed into here. Some batteries would be uh, directed towards the other paddle so they can go down their path. Now, the idea is that this disk is going to be processing three processes in one go so there's three recovery systems going on there's one group here one group here and one group here so how it works is as these discs move around the batteries would actually follow these paths so they've got no other other way to go they'd have to follow around this path here and be ejected once they finish their process as they come through they'd get charged at this point and we'll still use a tp4056 so as it uh, hits the discharge, we'll still use an Arduino-based discharger, which will help us to record the capacity um, and the accuracy of the discharging. And then finally, we'll move into the recharge, where we'll have a TP4056 to finally recharge it, ready for storing. Uh, we've also, again, got the section here where it ejects any batteries that are of high temperature or just take too long to char charge them, the basic the bad ones. The only disadvantage I can see about this is because the paddles have to move together, one station has already charged, then we cannot move forward until the others have charged as well. And that goes for each of those processes within the station. So once these are all completed, that paddle will shift forward again, the next batch would engage, that one would engage in there and so on and so on or ejected there and that's the only disadvantage I can see about this one other thing I didn't realize until I had finished drawing it and looked at it was that we would still need a form of expanding these batteries and pushing them outwards so I kind of thought about a, a cone that would either come down and push push these batteries out so that they engage with uh, the paddle and have that outward force to push the batteries in and out of the store. As I said, you've got to think outside the box and I hope that this kind of instills some conversation, starts a discussion, and your comments are always invaluable to, to this uh, uh, episode as well as this channel. So let me know. That's the, that's the Dischargenator concept. Feel free to comment, criticize, critique, however you want to call it. I look forward to them. Good luck.